Hi everyone, welcome back to AI Coding channel. Today I want to address an issue that is not being addressed that much in social media and is that if you can really copy paste in data science projects or when you're working with machine learning. This video is mainly oriented to machine learning and data science aspirants who are wondering what are the best practices that they should follow when entering into these two fields. If you're new to the field, most likely you want to start with the basics. You don't want to get into the code development. You don't want to build very complex things. So you probably want to put your energy on something else, trying to understand the fundamentals of the field through coding. There are a lot of open source platforms that help beginners get into the field of machine learning and data science. One of them is GitHub. You can also go into a website called Towards Data Science. Through these platforms, we can leverage our productivity and efficiency by, you know, just simply copy pasting code. When I talk about copy pasting, I'm not telling you that you have to copy paste your code all of the times. This is just for the phase when you have to learn something new or when you want to do things fast. I'm going to show you a quick example on how can you use GitHub to build a completely new data science project from scratch with your own data. I have selected a very basic example to showcase what you can and what you cannot copy paste directly from a machine learning project. I went on GitHub and I found this amazing Jupyter Notebook by Susan Neal 2016, which you can find in the description section below. The first thing that you should account for is that you have to be careful with what you copy and paste. There's a lot of trash on GitHub and with time you will eventually learn the most powerful skill that a data scientist have, which is critical thinking. If you scroll through this notebook, you can see that it is very complete and it has almost everything you need to build up a simple logistic regression use case. The data set used in this notebook is the banking data set, which you can find in the UCI repository for machine learning. I will try to use what they have used in this project to build a logistic regression model based on other data sets. I will be using the breast cancer data set, which you can also find in the same website. The links are below. Let's first copy and paste the libraries that are being used. Probably we won't be using all of them, but they can easily be removed after we finish the notebook and proceed to optimize it. You can see that we already run into an issue. I know that the train test split function has been moved to model selection, so I can easily change that myself. If you don't know about this and it happens with any other uh, library function, you can just easily Google it. Reading the data is a process I have automated long time ago. Most of the times you can easily copy paste this section and it will work. Here they are reading a CSV file and stating that the header is at row zero. This will work perfectly with our data set, but in other occasions you might need to tweak the parameters to properly read your data. As you can see, the shape here differs and we have just accidentally killed our data set. And that is why we suddenly have a data set with no roles. We will have to understand this and correct the mistake, but so far so good. Let's keep going. Both data sets are binary classification problems, so we can explore the target variable in the same way. We just need to copy and paste the line and change the name for our target's name. Our target variable is called diagnosis. So that you understand the problem, the aim of this data set is to predict whether the cancer is benign or malignant. Cool, seems like our data is a bit more balanced than the banking data set. The good part about getting into other people's code is that you can definitely learn from their ideas that can help you with your problem. Like this part, to see the average of each feature and how they stand depending on the target variable. Here's the tricky one. In the banking notebook, the exploration is mainly done on categorical data and it happens that our dataset does not contain categories, but it only has continuous values. This means that basically all the representations that the notebook has are not valid for us. Over time, you will learn about this and you will learn which visualization is suitable for each data type. Violin representations are very common for this data, but to simplify, we would just 
use box plots as alternative. Visualizations are very important as they will help us when selecting the most relevant features for our project. We will also use Seaborn to represent this, so that's super easy because we already imported it when copy and pasting the libraries. If you don't know how to represent a box plot in Seaborn, you can easily try to find another notebook, but I will recommend you to have a notebook of preference and then these small issues, just take them from other websites, for example, like Stack Overflow and tweak it for your needs. If you look closer inside the box plot representation, you can see that there are a lot of features that seem to give the same information. We can easily use a join plot to compare these two features deeper. We can also just plot the correlation between features, which is an old trick, but very powerful. As you can see, most of these ideas come from me having a good theoretical background on how to approach the problem and how to solve it. But the code itself can be easily found on the internet and adapted to our needs. Okay, so the last step is going to be to copy and paste the algorithm itself. The only thing that we need to change is to select our target and our features. Then we can use the code to easily predict the test set results and calculate accuracy. The next thing that the notebook doesn't contain but we must do is the conversion of the target variable from strings to a binary number. This can easily be done by using list comprehensions in Python. So our accuracy is 0.92. It is actually not a surprise and it's not wrong. The notebook of reference was very good and we have successfully used our knowledge to adapt their code to our needs. If you would have just taken the code and imported the raw data without understanding each step, most likely you will have end up in a loop of errors or not selecting the adequate features, which will have probably messed up with our algorithm. So based on my own experience, I normally work with the same type of data, so I like to automate the process of reading data, visualizing it, and even sometimes when I have to build a neural network and it contains the same structure and I just have to do some modifications, that's completely fine. As long as you know the theory behind and what you're doing, you can always change a few things in the code. You don't really have to build all the code from scratch. The main aspect about this field is that, of course, you do need to know what the results are showing. If you're just going to copy paste and not understand anything, it's just simply not worth it. And it's better for you to just, you know, try to understand everything from scratch and build everything from scratch as many times as you need. Something that you have to be aware of is uh, plagiarism, especially when you're not using this code for learning purposes, but you're actually wanting to use this code uh, for your own company or someone else's company. You have to be very careful with the code that you get from GitHub, whether it has a license or not. You cannot just simply copy paste your code and use it. You will have to use the license and you will have to acknowledge the work that others have done. I've gotten so many times the question of why, why should someone hire a data scientist or machine learning engineer if you can just go to Stack Overflow and copy paste some code. That is not true, obviously. 
you can really save a lot of time just by taking some code and making it your own and that's not something bad to do but make sure that you really understand what you're doing thank you very much for watching this video i hope you found it very useful subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you in the next one bye